guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this algebraic equation. So we have x factorial is equal to 10 factorial over 6 factorial. Now, 10 factorial, this is equal to 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So it's equal to 10 multiplied by n minus 1 all the way up to 1. Now we are dividing this by 6 factorial, which is equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now, if you notice, we have 6 on our numerator as well as 6 on our denominator, so these two can cancel out. Same thing with 5, same thing with 4, and same thing with all the terms below 6. So now, all we're left with is simply 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. And this is equal to x factorial. Now 10, this is equal to 5 times 2. 9 is equal to 3 times 3. 8 is equal to 4 times 2. And 7 is just 7. We can't simplify that anymore. Now, we want to find all the numbers from 2 going up. So we already have 2, right? So 2 times, so we could cancel that out. Now we have a 3. So write 3. Now we have a 4. We have a 5. Now, we don't actually have a 6. However, 3 times 2 is 6. So then these two cancel out. And finally, we have a 7. So we could think of 1 times this, because 1 times anything itself. And as you can see, this is equal to 7 factorial, because it's 7 times 7 minus 1 times 7 minus 2, going on until 1. So this means that x is equal to 7. Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this problem. So we have x times the square root of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now what I'm first going to do is I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides to move this 1 to the right hand side. So now we get x times the square root of x is equal to negative 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. Now, x times the square root of x squared, well, x squared is simply just x squared. So we have x squared times the square root of x squared is simply just x. This is equal to negative 1 squared is 1. Now, x squared times x is x to the power of 3. And now I'm going to go ahead and move this one back. So now we have x to the power of 3 minus 1 is equal to 0. And I move that 1 just so it could be sim um, more simple to square both sides. So now if we have something in the form a to the power of 3 
minus b to the power of 3, this is actually equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So one is the same thing as one to the power of three. So if we plug in our values here, we get x minus one times x squared plus x times one is simply just x plus one squared, which is simply one. And now this is still equal to zero. Now this gives us two equations. We have x minus one is equal to zero and x squared plus x plus one is equal to zero. For x minus one equals zero, this means that x is equal to one. However, if we plug in x for one, we get one times the square root of one, which is simply one plus one is equal to zero. Well, one plus one is two, so two is not equal to zero. So this is actually rejected. This does not work. So now let's go ahead and try our second equation. Well, to solve this, we actually need to go ahead and plug this into the quadratic formula. So by doing that, we get, I'm not going to waste your time by plugging it in all. We simply get negative one plus or minus the square root of negative three over two. Well, the square root of negative three, this can be written as, I'm going to write it up here, the square root of negative three is equal to i times the square root of three. Because i is the square root of negative one. So now this would give us two equations. We get x is equal to negative one plus i to the power, of, or sorry, i times the square root of three over two. And we also get x is equal to negative one minus i times the square root of three over two. However, if you do end up plugging these into this equation, it actually is again rejected. Both of these are rejected as well. And this equation actually has no solution. So no solution is our answer. Yeah.